Hangout. Hey, welcome everybody to our Hangout Technology Thursday. We're going to be talking about green, clean technologies, solving a real patent crisis we have in America where people buy a patents and nothing gets done. We see very efficient engines not even utilized in our cars and unable to, uh, to get those patents to market. So why so many inventions and so few productions and products? Doesn't make sense. So we'll talk about that tonight. And if you are checking our video chat, tomorrow is our big show, or my big show. I'll be doing the blackface to impersonation video of Barack Obama for Halloween. I'm gonna dress up on Halloween. What a concept. So come into our video chat button if you happen to see this video playing right now. And you'll tune right in to the blackface video. All right, great because I'm not going to be doing a Hangout tomorrow. I am going to be doing a Hangout at David, Spon David John Sponheim's YouTube account, but chat is laggy. I don't understand why. Laggy, laggy on your end, not laggy on mine. Maybe people are being locked out of the chat system. Vaughn's been having a lot of problems with chat. It's kind of strange, and that's why I opened up a stream-up show. So I'm going to open that up right now. Shut my audio down. Okay. Got it. Okay, I got that running. We do have an alternative a chat room right now over at uh, at StreamUp in case you're having problems. You can chat over there if you want to go in there. All right, yeah, real problems with the chat. But I am broadcasting. No dropout frames at, at Ustream, no dropout frames at Justin. And yeah, we're doing well. Okay. Kind of strange. Uh, earlier, I played a, an amazing array of videos that you could look at. Maglev, rail trains, you name it. Pretty cool, huh? It turns out that uh, we have... Well, that's interesting. Yeah, many cam must be up and running in the background. Unless it's, oh no, actually, no, it's not. It's, uh, that is strange. Yeah, you'd think Minicam would be up and running. It's not. So it's literally taking my feed from XSplit, which is good. Okay, unless, of course, it's not. I don't know. Okay, we'll see what's happening. Chat is locked up. I'm not sure why chat is having problems over gone, but again, you can go into a stream up dot com slash America's third party. Be sure you uh, actually type in America's third party. Streamup.com slash America's third party. This is a vertical windmill of the Savonius type behind me. This is one of the, the newest type of vertical windmills out there, and it has a pr tremendous potential. And I've even discussed the possibility of creating uh, vertical windmills like this on top of electric poles. This is an idea I came up with in 2008 that I think could very, very, very likely be viable for our future. Let's take a look here. I've got uh, an example I can show you right now of what I'm talking about. Let's put that uh, video on hold there. Let's see, Asimo. Take a look at this uh, concept. This idea could be implemented on all the different electric poles in the country. And we're talking millions of electric poles. And the unit to retrofit on there basically clamps down to the existing pole and has a charging generator in it that then converts the energy into the electric grid and feeds the electric grid with energy. And the concept is very strong. It could be a very viable way of powering up our nation's backup grid. It's better than a smart grid. It's a genius grid. It's one that will work in the event of an electromagnetic pulse hitting our country, which would be a terribly devastating thing for a lot of us. 
I just can't get over how chat is being attacked over at Vaughn. It's too bad. You know, the, Mark Vaughn has done a great job of holding together a good network, and he hasn't sold out, and I don't understand why he's being attacked all the time. You know, it's like, do these people have a life besides DDoSing and attacking people? It seems like they don't. It's weird. But we are broadcasting. Hi, Alan. We have 21 viewers. Hi. Okay. Hi, Alan. Uh, Alan's over at, at StreamUp. Good. Well, we have a backup chat room at StreamUp, just, just in case you're looking. And we do have a JustCast show as well. We have, and Mad Dog's in stream up. Good, 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 good. Vaughn is down. Let's talk about the problems with technology. This is a classic example. I mean, here they build robust websites. They cannot handle the traffic at times, like Vaughn's not having the traffic, and uh, it's having a, a DDoS attack. DDoS is distributed denial of service. And what that means is, hackers that can get software for free on the internet in these whereas sites and can grab this stuff and just start sending out messages to anybody's IP address that they, they've located on the internet and they can watch the IP using tracking devices to track their IP. So it's the whole thing. Once you develop new technology, then you develop cheaters that cheat and do whatever they have to do to, to take over and destroy the virtue of what we're doing. The green, clean technologies, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. In case you didn't know, we have a serious problem in the ocean off of Fukushima. Let me play the, the loop for you. This ominous sound is precisely what we're looking at. A massive spread of radioactive material, water mostly, carrying radioactive isotopes of cesium, uranium, plutonium, that may not decay for over th almost 30,000 years. Some uranium will take 30,000 years. I'm casting uh, on here and Vaughn. And YouTube slash David John Sponheim. Those are the places. Yeah, so stream up Vaughn and YouTube.com slash David John Sponheim. We might not do you stream. Just so I want to make sure I have an interactive show going with stream up. Like Mad Dog is in here, Shrek is getting in here. I'll bring in Shrek in just a second. If I bring in the audio, I'll end up hearing myself. That's the problem with this with setup here. Don't know if I can control the. Uh oh. Continue. Hi. DT Lura's in. Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Yeah, we're having problems over at chat at Vaughn, and I'm not sure what the deal is, but yeah, thanks for coming in and talking politics. Technology is facing a huge hurdle because we've got all these oil companies that control the uh, combustion engine access. They, have, they work with the auto companies to keep engines un inefficient. That's why we haven't seen 100-mile-gallon cars in America. So you guys can track Bond, and if anything pops up, tell me. But we've got a, a lot of hurdles to get past. Uh, the power of the oil companies is a huge political power in America, which controls uh, how we produce low-cost energy for average consumers. That's a huge problem. And the other problem that we don't seem to attend to the, the Gulf of, of Mexico, and we're not attending to the Fukushima crisis. So not only do we have the problem there at Fukushima, but we also have the Gulf of Mexico crisis that's pending still, still out there, the Gulf of uh, oil, I'd like to call it, sitting out there. We've got a looming uh, series of problems, chemtrails flying over our head. This is a real photograph of chemtrails. 
that affects what we're doing. These are technologies that can be uh, used against mankind. And this guy took the time to actually locate the chemtrail planes and take a picture from another plane. So it's pretty cool, high definition. But we've got so many things looming uh, that it's hard to even believe that we, we could focus on something as simple as renewable energy or even keeping my screen on. Hang on just a second. Hit the wrong button. There we go. So chemtrails are uh, are going on, altering the atmosphere, and these are actual climate studies that are being done that are controlling uh, what's happening in California, for instance. We're seeing a drought form, and some people are saying, well, why don't they use chemtrails to help bring water to California? Good question. Yeah, why, why are these evil doers literally trying to create a drought? Well, the answer is pretty simple. They want a, an environment for the Democrats to get elected. <laughs> is that absurd or what? I mean, the technology is there to alter the weather patterns. They've been able to seed clouds for 50 years now. When they're able to do this with these chemicals in our atmosphere. They never asked us to spray in our atmosphere. They never asked the people of America if it's okay to do this. So this is going on right under our nose, and we don't have anybody in American politics to stop this. And there's so many people on the internet that are realizing that this, this is a, an ongoing problem that has to be dealt with. We cannot possibly allow it to just continue. Okay, so we got those hurdles. Oil companies controlling energy patents, energy use, uh, access to even renewable energy, like the hydroelectric dams in Washington and Oregon. Only 20% of them are actually used, which is kind of weird. Only 20% are actually being utilized. 20% of the renewable energy coming from water is being utilized. The oil companies have contracts that keep precedent, and the oil companies have to constantly feed oil into the into the electric grid. They're used, also coal companies are big on that. They produce 85% of the electricity that we have. So the, all these factors coming together, creating a problem for all of us to, uh, to piece together and make sense of. So we have to come up with a political force to generate zero point energy, low cost energy solutions for our home. They're not gonna do it for us. They're certainly not gonna give us any perks in life. Okay, thanks for, uh, for coming in. This chat is a little bit different, obviously. When we got people uh, unable to uh, really see the chat, for some reason, yeah, the chat over at, at StreamUp is not that important to them. StreamUp is all about bringing more people in, more cameras in. And right now I've got Mad Dog sitting in his house just watching the show, kicking back. Hey, man, you don't have to talk because I don't have your, all, uh, your volume on yet. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't quite come in right because it's on the same screen, which is uh, unfortunate because I have to block my feed. So the only way I could do this is to, to pull off the stream up show and then I, you could come in and talk. I have to block my feed. So the only way I could do this is to, to pull off the stream up show and then I, you could come in and talk. Yeah, see, so that's happening now. Got a double double thing going on. See, that's happening now. Just because I opened it up, there I turned it off now. Okay. But Mad Dog's in the room and he's hanging out. And I lost my stream up feed. Let's do that over here then. But isn't this amazing? All this technology that we have now at our fingertips—it's kind of cool. That's why I'm I'm really enjoying uh, living a, a very comfortable, luxurious life on very little, and it's ushered in a new era for me, a sustainable era, in which, you know, I can pretty much get by with all of this great equipment. We have video on demand. We have Netflix and Amazon Prime. If we want to order something in the mail, it, it delivers for free. If we want to, you know, get something on Netflix, uh, video on demand, any, any TV show that was ever produced, we can get that without getting the commercials. 
So that's pretty cool. All right, cool. You made it in. Not sure why Shrek is having problems with his end, but whatever. It happens. Something went wrong. Huh. It's connecting again. Okay, good. I'll shut it off again. Okay, great. Yeah, so we're stuck there with that chat. And I also have uh, JustCast. That's broadcasting, too. So let me bring in that. It's almost overwhelming with the number of screens we have now. We have a computer, a desktop we run our show on with an i7 prop processor from Intel. And it all. we also have a that up there 24 gigabytes of RAM and when we bought it we bought it online the, the computer was $360 it was like an amazing deal rebuild and they gave it uh, the guy who, who sold it to us was rebuilding and getting an even better processor generation 3 processor as opposed to a generation 2 i7 so that's pretty cool all right so we got that running and I gotta mute that. And I gotta mute that. Okay, we got Mr. Uh, Ed is in there. Thanks, Ed. Mr. Uh, Ed is in there. Thanks, Ed. Well, that's kind of nice. Over at JustCast, I I can get a. Uh, I'll show you Ed now on the similar program. And I can hear Ed. There you go, Ed. See, we can hear Ed. I can even raise his, his volume. That's kind of cool. Ed, I can hear you perfectly. And you're over at JustCast, so that's kind of cool. What's going on? Just, just jump. Not much, man. It's just, uh, yeah, you're uh, you're coming in just fine, man. You getting ready for the holiday? Are you going to hang out and celebrate Halloween with me tomorrow with, as a Mr. Mr. Broke Insane Obamas. I'm going to be broke, insane on Obamas. Mad Dog's headed to JustCast right now. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll, you know, I'm going to monitor the uh, chat. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to monitor the chat over at StreamUp in case you guys want to chat over there. I'm, I'm in chat. I did go as in as a. I'm just watching you. That's kind of cool. So I'm I'm not even in as a member there. Okay, cool. Yeah, bunch had to screw it up because you can't even get to see the chat. Yeah, I have a feeling this is in preparation for uh, tomorrow's show. They're trying to hose me any which way they can, and if they figure they can attack Bond, they can shut me down. What they don't know is I'm going to be uploading everything. I think somebody's DDoS. I know they're DDoSing Vaughn, not not me. They're DDoSing Vaughn directly now. But uh, tomorrow I'll be able to uh, upload to the Google Hangout, and you guys can watch it at our americasthirdparty.com slash video chat button. That should play right in there. Because that'll play the uh, the Vaughn network. Yeah. It's pretty serious when they do this. So let me sign into this chat room here. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Hang on, I'm, I'm reconnecting. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, we're broadcasting at JustCast, but I'm not getting... Uh, Yeah, it could be anything. 
Most likely it's a, it's a hacker situation. It doesn't surprise me. Now I'm to, having to look up my, my background information. Yeah, I'm going to drop off your, your chat right now. Sorry, man. It's just not working out uh, at this point. But I will be back at to JustCast. I'll talk to you guys over there. So I'm trying to get into JustCast right now. And I somehow passed up my password, so I think we'll get that. But our stream up is uh, running and our Hangout is running, good. Well, folks, this is exactly what technology uh, problems can do to you. They can lock up your ability to communicate online and a number of things. It's unfortunate that this stuff goes down, but hey, there are people that do not want a third party out there and they'll do everything they can to shut it down, including attack the attack the, the show itself. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre how how we become so addicted to this great great technology that it's it's almost unheard of to uh, to not have it. And I remember the day was when you know before your time, Ed, where we had twelve channels on our TV. There I am. Okay, now I'm in as a chatter and a viewer and a broadcaster Chatter and a viewer and a broadcaster and i like that feature i can control the and i like that the audio welcome hello security so we got chat over there going i see you here i see you here okay we've got two chat rooms going uh stream up alpha dog is in there and j just cast and let me show you both uh, both screens. And Ed, I can hear you now. Cool. And we opened up a brand new uh, stream up show called America's Third Party. So Alpha Dog was in here earlier. You can see him there. He's at Stream Up right here. And Ed's over at JustCast. So we're spanning the globe trying to reach out to people. And we're also broadcasting this entire show on a Hangout at the same time. So it's amazing all the different qualities uh, that are happening right now. It's truly amazing. Okay. Let me get your screen in there, Alpha Dog. Uh, Alpha Dog, hey, I. David. Hey, man. So I guess I am able to hear you. Hey, David. Hi, David. Can you I, hear me, David? I can hear you, Alpha Dog. Yeah. That's cool, but but you moved around, so you know I'm kind of tagging you with my my screen grabber. Now the question is, am I going to get? Can you see me in JustCast? I can see you in JustCast. Are you there too in JustCast? We got somebody over in JustCast right now. So I guess we're not talking about green clean technology. We're talking about somebody who's uh, posting all kinds of weird stuff, and you know possibly. Uh, one of those neo Nazis. Is that you and Just Cast? With the helicopters, Alpha? Is that you showing the helicopter, Alpha? Breaker, breaker. Alpha dogs over there. Okay. Bouncing in and out. Yeah, I think we've got some sort of a, a another signal coming in over there next to Ed. And Ed, we can hear you too. Ed, can you go testing one, two, three? Let's say testing one, two, three for me. Be 
if you hear me yet, can you go testing one, two, three? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. ATP test, one, two, three. There he is, Ed. Discount. 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 Jobless discount, one, two, three. Okay, Ed's discount. jobless discount. Ed's in, great. Well, that's working for me. And I'm going to rely on your knowledge and ability to to check Bond periodically to see if it is up and running. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we've got the Hangout. Everything else going on in the background. Okay, good. All right, so when we look at the uh, idea of creating zero-point technology, Many people are talking about this right now, like the Thrive Movement. If you go to thrivemovement.com, you will actually see very new solutions. Uh, they're coming up with brand new ways of making energy. And uh, I'm going to give you guys a link in the chat room because I was so impressed with this that uh, I immediately started representing their concept on our show. And we have play background of our show in the after show because it's really a, a, a very interesting they're taking taking it to the next level and it's amazing we working with magnets working with the uh, idea of of harmonic harmonic motion or harmonic energy forms that continually get bigger and bigger this is how tesla developed his uh, concept when you start to create a sine wave, you can adjust it to a faster and bigger sine wave, and you can create through harmonic electronic progression more energy than it was originally produced. And this defies Kelvin's second law of thermodynamics, actually. And our patent office has never acknowledged that. They've never acknowledged that anybody could ever, you know, basically create energy. The idea is that all energy is conserved, and that's been the concept since uh, Kelvin created this concept. Bond's up now? Okay, great. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Mark's pretty good about getting back up and running. Okay, I'll come in there right now. Thank you, Ed. And, uh, yeah, KK2013 uh, Anonymous is here. Okay, here we are. So you're mimicking NPR with their Friday thing is cool. I'm um, not really. No, I'm not mimicking NPR. We started our technology Thursday four years ago, way ahead of NPR. Yeah. We have been copied, believe it or not. Now, NPR may have come up with their idea on their own. I have no idea, but that's okay. I just, you know, it, NPR has a similar concept, but. The Thrive Movement is a really good link to check because it talks about a, a new form of energy which they believe is perpetual and, and something that will actually grow over time. When they are getting more energy out of machines that break the strong bond between water than you could ever imagine, we are beginning to see a, a, a growth of new ideas that are showing that we are defying the second law of thermodynamics and we are creating some things. Let me show you a water generator that literally started as a hobby and never was developed, by the way, that I know of. Check this out. Get my audio up for you. You watched Thrive last night, really? Cool. What he has tried to do is to capture the intriguing effect he noticed in the vibrating boiler pipe and use it to create a totally new water heater, one that works without any heat source. This company now produces what amounts to a well-engineered water hammer. It thumps and smashes the water fed into it, raises the temperature to boiling point or to steam in a matter of seconds to replace household or industrial boilers. So they happen to call these machines pumps. What we have is a hydrosonic pump that has a rotor located inside. It's a cylinder that has holes bored in it at specific angles and depths 
ranging from a few hundred holes up to a few thousand, depending on where we're going to make hot water steam. Watch this. The key to the machine seems to be the number and the design of the holes in the rotor. Vix has experimented with many different combinations to get the best results. Look at this equipment he created. Look at all the precision instrumentation. It's tightly into a steel chamber with only a very small gap between the two. Water is fed into the gap. The rotor is spun rapidly by a small electric motor. As it spins, the water is pummeled and hammered through the holes. In seconds, it flows out of the cylinder as hot water or steam. What's so extraordinary about such an ordinary looking machine is the claim that it is more than 100% efficient. More energy has been measured coming out in the form of heat or steam than the electrical energy needed to turn the rotor. The term for this is over unity. Okay, the term for this is over unity. So more energy comes out of this water than is required to turn the rotor. Isn't that fascinating? So the strong bond in water is actually the source of energy. So if it's true that all energy is conserved, then the potential energy in water is being harvested by this process. Warrant issued for husband. Delaware State Senator for stealing, taking down GOP sign, swiping. Now I see it's been happening around the country, folks. I know this is not topical related to uh, green energy, but look at the story that just came into our bond chat. Warrant issued for a husband of Delaware lawmaker over a GOP sign swiping. Police in Delaware are looking for the husband of a state senator on video taking down political signs put up by Republican challengers. Wow. See, it's, the, many Democrats are into this. I don't know what, what it is about sign stealing, but thank you for that link from Vaughn. Thank you, Vaughn. Wow, that was amazing. If you play video games, check out this trailer. Hatred, gameplay, 1080p. Some content may be inappropriate for children. Let's take a look. This is modern gaming technology. My name is not important. My name is not important. What is important is what I'm going to do. What is important is what I'm going to do. I just fucking hate this world and these human worms. Wow. Its carcass. Hatred. My whole life is just cold, bitter hatred. And I. You know, I think I've seen enough. You know, promoting hatred on games is like easy to do. Building games that promote love, now that's a concept. And I don't mean sex games. I mean, seriously, wouldn't it be great if game gaming giants like Electronic Arts were required to actually produce some educational positive games as opposed to hate games for every... I'm not saying hate games aren't, aren't going to be allowed. I'm saying when they produce a hate game, they should also make a love game, don't you think? Hate, love, the duality of everything. You're a good person, a nice person, and they call me Peter. Peter, you took your medication. Good for you. Folks, we've got a lot of people in the room, in the room that are uh, on mental uh, assistance, and, and I think that's great. You're managing in a tough time with a lot of fear and a lot of hatred going on. Uh, signs are private property, but sniffer, but when they're put publicly out there, it's considered vandalism. It's a, th uh, I believe it's a third degree or a third level class, or it's a class C misdemeanor. That's right. I can turn off the background sound, especially the just cast one. I just have to get there. Well, let's be clear. I've got to find just cast here. How do I turn these sounds off? It's the sound of a beep, right? And now TV's over just cast. Turning my sounds off. Dang. Well, I'll turn them off there. You'll hear in the background, possibly. But yeah, I'll check my profile, hang on. Just tying a bandwidth, going in there. Turning off signs. Ding, ding, there they are. 
Sound off. I got it. Okay, we're good. And I want to welcome everybody uh, who is trying to get on, into JustCast and StreamUp. Thanks for trying. And uh, our new StreamUp cast is is working, by the way. It's, it's streamup.com slash America's third party. <laughs> Shrek. He's trying to get in StreamUp. JustCast. Mad Dog. You're in. Ed's in. JustCast is doing a pretty good job with the multiple casting that, you know, used to get this with Stick Cam back in the day. Stick Cam was the, uh, went out of business because I guess they had violations of uh, terms of service violations with minors in their show. Homeless guys promoting himself over there for president. He, he feels he can do that without any, any, uh, any problems. I won't kick you out, homeless man. Yeah. You know, I want you to run for president too. And I, I can honestly say I want as many people to run for president as possible right now because we really need all the input we can get. You all have important messages and you really are trying to, to get the message out. And I see that on a daily basis. That's why we have a show, right? So we can talk. You know, you're not going to be able to stop liberalism, Robert. I, I hope you realize that. But maybe after losing two or three elections, the Republicans still don't get it. That's okay. It takes time. Change is difficult, especially the kind of change that Barack Obama has been thrusting down our throats like like reverse vomit. Let's talk about the real issues like RFID shipping and FEMA camps and guillotines. Well, we normally do that, jerk of fan, on our Monday show. But the Thrive Movement is, a, is an organization developed by one of, the, one of the people who were behind the Procter & Gamble fortune. And he, uh, Mr. Proctor, has uh, one of the sons decided to create this movement. They put a lot of money into it. But, you know, starting a movement is not easy. It's not liberation philosophy. He's talking about liberalism, Puffington. He's talking about liberalism. It's the sound of your brain dribbling out of your eardrums. It's the sound of your brain dribbling out of your eardrums. It's when you no longer think about things and you expect uh, the, the great deity in the sky, uh, your government, to save, it, save you and solve all problems. It's the end of, of what we know as freedom. That's what liber liberalism has created. It's created all these mindless idiots to just sit around going, well, we need to help those people, so let's continue getting taxed. Well, taxation leads to waste and corruption. Taxation, like carbon taxation on green energy products, is going to kill our economy, not help it. We need to innovate and solve the problems facing us, like air pollution and water pollution and radiation in our oceans and oil in our, in our Gulf of Mexico. I mean, it's crazy, but if we got to actually do the due diligence of solving the problem, not just tax and spend, and that's the end product of liberalism. Liberalism. Well, it has a lot of flaws. And I don't want to hand over our country to the churches. I agree. And I'm not a social conservative. I'm a social liberal. And I, and I actually would tell people, yeah, I'm a social liberal. I believe in certain aspects of liberalism. But I also believe we need to cut those purse strings of our government and make sure we cut the waste. And so far, the Democrats haven't shown any ability whatsoever to cut waste. Obama said he was going to cut $2.7 trillion in, in waste. Excuse me, $1.7 trillion. He, he claimed he was going to cut $1.7 trillion. He ended up overspending by $6.66 trillion. Exactly. Margaret Thatcher was right. The problem with socialism is sooner or later, you run out of other people's money. And that was the big conflict I faced when I was studying all these different forms of economics. I don't want the working man to pay for the non-working man, and that's what the, we get with socialist programs. So we created a whole different concept, which will help usher in a, a, an entire new generation of free market activity and government solution activity. And we created this book called Hybrid Capitalism. And hybrid capitalism is a 200-page book that introduces a way in which the government can actually stimulate the free market, compete in the free market, not use unfair advantage in the free market like a socialist economy would, 
but rather just get a return on investment and finance its operations so we don't have these black holes of money going into the empty space like we do currently with the system we have. I'll give you an example. American government no longer creates any food. I doubt even the MREs that the men eat out in the battlefield are made by America. Seriously. We outsource everything. NASA is a classic example of an outsourcing nightmare right now. You know, I won't sign a Kyoto, a Kyoto agreement that requires me to engage in cap and trade legislation. No way. That's a Ponzi scheme that's been proven to be abused at the international level. When Obama was signing the Copenhagen Treaty, the biggest nations, Russia and China, didn't even join in, and consequently, uh, it became a feeding trough for people to make money. It's not the answer. Cap and trade legislation is not the answer. This hybrid capitalism has more to offer in terms of solving the country's problems by creating renewable energy solutions. Let me tell you, the food that we make in our country, farmers make, is great. But our production levels dropped 2% every year since Barack Obama became president. I would have a, a robust agricultural system, bring some of that food to the market with government packaging, and basically put it out there on the shelves as frozen entrees, nicely made of different varieties of food that the American people can buy. And anybody who gets EBT food money, food stamps, would be buying that food. That's one of the things they'd have to buy. That's a solution right there. I, I take a program called the USDA, which gives farmers money to not grow stuff right now and just say, hey, you're going to get the same amount of money, but we want you to grow stuff. And we take the proceeds, then process them into these frozen entrees, put them out there in the EBT program, which is also run at the USDA with a supplemental nutrition assistance program, SNAP. And you've got a looped amount of money going back into the system, saving your tax dollars. That's just one of the ideas that we put out there. Hybrid means, Nicole, it, it's, it's a merge of various ideas. No, no, terraforming Mars, people can't even terraform their backyard. And that's in a nice environment. I mean, seriously, we can't even create nice livable hamlets in this country without creating all this money grabbing and greed. The cow fart dilemma has a, a serious implication worldwide. Uh, we often talk about this. It's not a joke. Flatulence from animals and livestock contribute five times more greenhouse gas than automobiles. And this animal flatulating, that's just one, of, one sample of one day's worth of flatulence sitting on its back. That's about 42 gallons of flatulence. That's how much flatulence is going in the atmosphere from one cow. Multiplied across the landscape, cows, pigs, humans. I'm not saying humans were gonna do anything with their flatulence, but you know, yeah, we could actually harness that energy. So some sort of a modern concept could be developed where we could actually provide a, a solution that makes sense, like a, a cow device of some sort. Something that would uh, help the poor little cow. Let me see if I have a picture of one of these. Yeah, here is, here's my cow blood plug device concept. I produced this uh, concept, you know, back in 2005 when we were talking about the issue, but it was a cool rock concept that we, we had to, to put a, a butt plug and a, a a removable bag that could be harvested off the back end of the cow. And you're saying, is this guy for real? Are you literally talking about cow farts? Well, yeah, they happen to be a good source of energy. I mean, you've heard of dairy digesters, right? We've got one up in Linden, Washington, near the border with Canada, that powers up 25,000 homes. So this is just a, you know, like a sight gag. I'm, I'm, I don't really think we're going to create butt plugs. But yeah, it is a serious issue. A lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and one of the things that we've been doing, uh, America has been studying this and trying to learn how to sequester carbon, carbon sequestration, putting it underground, storing it for later. It turns out that the biggest storage area for carbon, believe it or not, is the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> uh, go figure. I, bottom of the ocean has a layer of methylene that is sitting there, floating on the bottom of the ocean. We could a straw down there we could pull out that 
that stuff and use it whenever we want it. <laughs> that kind of thing. I don't think the Kyoto is a good agreement for the world because it doesn't take into account alternative uh, ways of solving the problem. It, it embraces cap and trade legislation and cap and trade legislation has never been proven to actually reduce carbon emissions. They estimate that with cap and trade, they'll reduce carbon and greenhouse emissions by 17% by 2030. 17%, I mean, it, I would start with getting rid of the chemtrails above our atmosphere. Let's talk about that. When you start talking about signing the Kyoto Accord, let's talk about get, dealing with a, a situation that's spinning out of control every day. And nobody in America, in American government is even dealing with that problem. I talked to about, about it earlier when the show started. This is a sample of what goes on every day across the nation. And nobody asked me if it was okay. This is an example of chemtrails taken from another plane, emanating with actual, they have, they have nozzles that deliver this stuff in the atmosphere. And, and don't call me a whack job for talking about it because this is actually a legitimate climate study that is fully accredited and, and approved by our government without our permission. It's raised a lot of concern. A lot of, a lot of people are very angry about what's happening. So, can I solve the problem? No. It's the same video I played over and over again. I want people to see it, Nicole. Every, everybody who looks into chemtrails knows that this technology is being used to alter our atmosphere. But you people who stand around going, oh, not one of these whack jobs that talks about chemtrails. Yeah. Nicole, you want to come into our chat room and talk? We've got Meow TV and Mad Dog listening to his headphones and rocking it out right now. Here he is. High five, Mab Dog. Right down, man. See, he's he's hearing us right now. See? Isn't that cool? Great technology. Anyway, yeah, let's talk about other things aside from how uh, the country is purposely poisoning the atmosphere. Let's go and sign a Kyoto Accur Accord and allow the UN to dictate what our policies are. Is that what you're saying? When we ourselves can't even stop our own go government from polluting the atmosphere above our heads causing what appears to be a drought in California. They could use chemtrails to create water, but no, no, they're trying to pull it away from the middle of the country to create an artificial drought. And I'm not the only person talking about it. The Google Hangout, no, that's not, that's JustCast. We're, we're broadcasting on JustCast and StreamUp as well. The JustCast link, do you want that? I don't really want to put out links here. It's justcast.com slash a third party. You can go check it out. I cannot hear you, Peter. Where are you? Are you over in, in JustCast? Because I can listen to people in JustCast and in Stream Up. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. What do you mean by that, King Moron? Demon Dave, try to be nice to people. Baba Uni is, is working on getting a photo. You're in Vaughn. I can't hear you, Peter. You're not broadcasting. You're screaming. Drop the link. Okay. Yeah. If it's too difficult for you to actually uh, type in the name, yeah, we can drop the link. Well, let's be clear. There's the link. Thrive debunked. Oh, no, not not this. One year later, thriving no more. Declining popularity, the empirical proof. Okay, well, I don't mind talking about both sides of the, the subject. I'm open to that, unlike Obama. Sure, let's talk about it. So yeah, when it first came out, November 11th, 2011, the one year anniversary of the initial release of the conspiracy theory move, movie Thrive, <laughs> even labeling it the conspiracy theory movie is ridiculous. You might say that this article is a post-mortem of Thrive, 
there's no doubt that this tribe is declining in popularity, they say, and the numbers prove it. Yeah, people are becoming brain dead, and they don't even look to the, the truth as a way of solving problems. No, I do not love DDoS attacks because every time I do, I end up having to broadcast another hour, and you're the one who's going to suffer. Yeah, we both suffer, but you suffer more. No, Blue Medic, you're just so far off the grid, it's ridiculous. That's okay. You can believe whatever you want. I'm not here to uh, force my opinion upon you. You can just think everything's fine, and we're, uh, we're living in a, a perfect world. And your 30 mile per gallon car is doing just great, even when it pollutes. The grid? Yeah, what grid? Well, the grid we have today is very vulnerable to electromagnetic pulse. And I was trying to explain this earlier in our chat room. We don't have enough backup wind power generation to even provide a trickle to our electric grid. So I came up with an idea that I think could very well be used and to help create jobs and opportunity it can be used to promote low cost energy. We've got so many electric poles in the country that could easily be turned into windmills. These wind generators, these Savonius windmills, can actually work at five miles per hour in terms of the wind speed. Wind speeds at low, as low as five miles per hour, whereas a big turbine would run on 15, 13 to 15 miles per hour wind speeds. So this could be used across the country to power up and provide us a trickle of energy in the event of an electromagnetic pulse knocking out the entire grid. It's entirely possible that all energy flow will stop if we get an EMP. Now, this is technology that's being developed by our enemies. Iran has EMP potential technology that could be used against us. If Iran came into our airspace near us and fired a Scud missile from a boat or something with an EMP on it, it could knock out our entire electric grid and send us back to 100 years in terms of our technology. Hey, Tandalaya, welcome. Yeah, it's an interesting show. I like reading the chat from you guys, too. Soy is good. Creates a lot of estrogen in men, yeah. If you're going to get soy, I would recommend avoiding GMO soy. A lot of the soy was produced to create genetically modified soybeans. So when you're buying soy milk or soy products, get non-GMO if you can find it. You can fact check all my shows all you want. What you're seeing is a general decay and a decline in American intelligence. So when a, a group like Thrive Movement declines in popularity, it's because people don't know what they're talking about. And everyone who who mentions it, oh, you're a conspiracy whack job. There's all this, this social hatred going on against anybody with a new idea, especially in technology. Yes, Iran has all the tech from Russia and China. Yeah, they could. Iran was developing proton beam technology uh, 25 years ago. Iran, believe it or not, has tremendous capability to uh, definitely affect our, our war. Intercept 